In this video, we'll consider some of the issues that we should uh, keep in mind when we're producing our videos regarding the format of instructional videos. And we'll look at some of the things that research shows works best. Now, how do we know what works when it comes to instructional videos? Well, first, there is research uh, out there, research, most of it has been done on, on MOOCs, which is the massive online courses built around videos. You can just simply look at the view numbers and how popular uh, are certain types of videos, which ones uh, are uh, the videos that people are willing to spend time on, and then also look at uh, what sorts of videos people buy, what are, kinds of, what are the kinds of things people will pay their own money for to learn from. And of course, we should also engage with the personal experiences and reflect on what works for us and then see how we can uh, best integrate that into our work as video producers. Now, uh, there are different types of video formats. There is a talking heads format, which is what you're seeing right now. There's screencasts, animation, documentary styles, lecture recordings. And I, I don't want to go through those aspects here right now, but I have prepared a sampler that is available on the Canvas course that this video is on as well. Um, and you can go through the different stuff, uh, different types and styles of videos and compare different approaches to the same type and, and then compare also different types and how uh, perhaps they approach creating videos. And you can also then use that for personal reflection about what you think works best for you and what's, what the scene is out there for in terms of instructional videos. Now, in this video, I want to address some of the typical questions people ask when they're thinking about the format of um, the video. So the length, speed of transition, speed of delivery, uh, whether there should be a face or not, whether you should have a script or not, what is the production value, and things like that. So let's start with the most controversial question out there, which is how long should a video be? And uh, very often you will hear something like this, video should be no more than two minutes when it's on the internet. And that simply is not true. Uh, in fact, uh, a good video length uh, of instructional video is anywhere between 6 and 12 minutes. At least that's kind of what the, the research suggests. And then here we can have to ask ourselves, like, what, how, how well can we trust the data? And much of the data comes from the research on MOOCs, and that finds uh, often the recommendations there are for shorter rather than longer videos. But if you look at actually what videos people will watch, and we'll see that, that that actually doesn't quite bear it all out. And often uh, videos that are the higher end of the length are just fine. So let's have a look at some examples of, of where I think this comes up. So first, uh, let's have a look at the Site Business School YouTube page. And these are the top 15 videos. And then we'll see that the, the two out of the top five are an hour or a bit over an hour long. And uh, there is another 17 minute video, but also here's another uh, uh, hour long video. So, four out of the top 15 are close, are very long videos by the internet standards. And then we see that people are willing to spend the time because there was something interesting. But we don't have to just stay there. We can have a look at uh, on YouTube, which helpfully shows us uh, views. And uh, I search for calculus so that we have videos on a similar topic. And these are the, the top five videos that YouTube recommended to me to watch if I want to learn more about calculus. And as you will see, they're all uh, over 15 minutes long. Uh, and in fact, uh, the most popular one is an hour and a half long, and it has a million, 1.2 million views. And that is just somebody uh, standing in front of a whiteboard, pretty much lecturing the way they would in a classroom. But, but when people have a subject they're really interested in, they're willing to spend the time and watch a video as long as they can learn from it. So I think that is, that's the important distinction to make is between video for education where somebody is trying to bring somebody along into, onto a journey uh, through a topic and tries to engage them in the topic and explain it as, as deeply as they can versus a promotional video. And often, of course, there are many videos um, that are two minutes long that are a minute and a half too long. So very often it is worth our time to make a short video um, when we're looking at promotional issues. But for education, I think uh, we can see that longer videos are fine. And the other thing to take into account is that uh, the language of video is changing and people's ex expectations are changing. So for example, on YouTube, the, the typical video is now well over 10 minutes. Um, if we look at what Linda is using, we'll find that they also have uh, videos that are six to 12 minutes long. Some, some of them are much shorter, but generally they, uh, they break down uh, longer topics into videos about 6 to 12 minutes. So that's where I think it's kind of a, it's a fairly reasonable amount of time to keep your video in those, in those parameters. And for education, that I think should be okay. 
Now, the other question is the speed of the video, the speed of delivery, speed of transitions. So how fast should you speak when you're recording a video? Well, it turns out uh, that uh, the people who recommend speaking very slowly and enunciating actually are wrong. The, the research seems to show um, that higher speed of delivery is better than lower speed of delivery. Uh, and higher speed in this, in this case is about 170 words per minute or a bit more, uh, maybe perhaps a bit less. And which is higher, which is higher than the average, which is anywhere between 140 and 150 words per minute. And there's some uh, research that was done on comparing uh, some of some popular tech talks, and the average of the of five of the popular tech talks they were investigating was 173 words per minute, um, and uh, some of them were even uh, over 200 words per minute. Some of them are a bit slower as well. So you can see uh, you can see that the speed of delivery actually should not be very slow, and people seem to people seem to be engaging better with a bit faster delivery. And many people like me even will listen at a double speed, which is something uh, that I recommend to people to try because that way you can um, not only learn a bit more, but some people find it easier to focus. Now, how about the speed of transitions? Well, uh, the research uh, is not exactly clear, but it seems to just that it's a bit slower is better. So you don't want to change things uh, all the time, but it is important to uh, not stay too long on one side, but balance that with uh, the need for not having too many transitions. So it's a bit of a balancing act, uh, and it's important to pay a bit of attention. But there isn't one magical formula how to do it. But perhaps the, the more traditional documentary style where you're switching shots and angles of you all the time isn't most appropriate for instructional videos, uh, unless, of course, it's something that's relevant to what you're trying to do. Uh, the other question that people often uh, um, ask is should there even be a face of the person should then just be just sound and some ins uh, some instructional uh, imagery uh, as in animation and things like that and uh, it seems that the uh, the research shows that many people prefer a face actually the majority of people prefer to have a face so 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 something something like like <laughs> having something like me in the video and, and it, it improves their engagement the research doesn't seem to indicate um, for, for that little that, it, that there is, that there is much different in terms of learning from the video. But it's also important to remember there are some people who find that person in the video very distracting. Uh, so again, you need to sort of balance that need uh, of the majority who prefer having a face in the video, and then but there's a minority, and not a small, necessarily a tiny minority of people who would rather just have uh, the voice and uh, some of the images in there. Now, the next question that people often uh, ask is, is it necessary to write a script for a video? And uh, there, are some, uh, there are some, again, some things to, uh, to keep in mind when thinking about scripts. So uh, making a script uh, makes the video much more consistent. You have every time you try to record it, it's exactly the same. You make sure you don't skip anything you want to say. And uh, for a short video, it may be necessary to do it. If, if you, the shorter the video, the more um, scripted, the more tightly planned it has to be. But it turns out that with the script, the downside is that it's, it's a lot harder to make, uh, and it, lots of people don't know how to write a script very well. And, and also, it's not that easy to read a script, so people are not used to reading out and sounding natural. So actually, the recommendation that I would have is like try sp using without a script. Many people are quite able to talk about a subject they know well, and they talk about often quite fluently. There is going to be a lot of small imperfections, a lot of stumbles, you have to backtrack. Uh, but that just makes the video more, more natural. And some people uh, find that a lot easier than, than reading a script. I would say perhaps even most people. But some people do need to follow a script or at least some very uh, sort of strict notes. And that is, that is fine as well. But there, there is sort of a balancing act. There is not one right answer. Uh, but it's certainly not completely necessary to have a script. Now, finally, uh, the question I want to address is what is the ideal production value? Now, what is a production value? Production value is basically the whole quality of, of the video look and feel, what, what, what the video looks like, what the lighting, how, you know, how, and you can immediately tell. So here, what you see here are screenshots of three videos from the same course uh, on Linda, or now LinkedIn Learning. So this, it's, it's a course on negotiation skills. And so this first video was a video made uh, in the early days of Linda, which is basically PowerPoint with a moving face uh, here. Uh, and then this is a video not only about Udemy, but the same person who's selling the course there as uh, a self-produced 
uh, course and this is the, the new version of that same course on Linda and you can immediately see the difference in production value so the increasing in for the increases in production value so how important is that and it turns out it actually isn't that important for learning and then and people are not that concerned with production uh, values when they're watching it and trying to learn from videos so it's uh, it's important that the videos look good enough and then that there is uh, the distracting and bad in certain certainly but it, it doesn't seem to be super important that uh, they all look very sickly produced even though of course you know Linda's got one of the one of the gold standards in here another example here is let's compare uh, uh, two videos on uh, the subject of of limits and so the first one is from a YouTube channel called three blue one brown and as you can see it's a very highly animated uh, slickly produced video it's this channel uh, is well known for that explaining the concept of limits as you can see there's there's little animations as well as changes it varies uh, trying to be very visual about what it's explaining and on the other hand we have uh, on the similar on the same subject video from uh, Khan Academy uh, and then you can see uh, it's simply what you're seeing there's somebody simply writing on a blackboard and uh, talking while, the, while they're doing that and that uh, turns out it may be even more effective than some of these slick videos because there's a there's a connection that the person can make, make with it so the production value isn't super important as you can see also you can see that backtracking and 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 deleting things and maybe saying oh I made a mistake here but all that is just part of make, it makes you more like feel feel like like somebody's explaining something to you now another comparison we can make is here between two videos um, uh, on different topics but I, I think quite instructive so it's so on the left hand side is uh, Norman J. Waldberger is a mathematician who makes videos about mathematics from um, on different subjects in mathematics there's hundreds of videos some of them are quite popular uh, they have so thousands of views and and then he's just simply talking in front of a whiteboard uh, and pointing at it and, and explaining something in a very traditional way but I think it's quite effective on the other hand we have um, a series of videos uh, introduction to economics from marginal uh, uh, Revolution University which is uh, uh, a blog that started making these videos and uh, by Tyler Cowen and Tal Alex Seberg to economists economists from America and you can see very highly produced slick videos very a lot shorter uh, than the mathematics ones which are half an hour or even an hour long these are uh, un usually under 10 minutes and you can certainly see uh, there's a huge difference at, at, at a glance but in terms of education which ones are more effective I don't think it's at, at all clear that these slickly produced videos are more effective than these uh, than, than sort of more traditional ones it really depends on how uh, much are people trying to learn from them uh, on their own so I, I just think I just think it's important uh, not to be stuck on the production values and as long as the videos are, are easy to access uh, and not distractingly um, um, disruptive or destructively bad quality I think they can be very much used for uh, learning so that's uh, about video formats and in the next uh, video we're going to have a look at some of the aspects of video production